going on, everyone? Welcome back. My name is Steve, and this is my boy Honey. I've been gone for a couple of weeks. I know uh, it's been it's been super busy. I've been out of town. I came back not too long ago, trying to just draw a lot of things outside of filming whiskey and food and all that stuff. So I think things are settling down. Just bear with me for our next couple of weeks as I squeeze back into my regular swing of things. So, anyways, so today my tips and tricks on how to score good whiskey. I've been asked a couple times, or more than a couple times, how I am able to, you know, score some of the, the rare bottles, some of the ones that are harder to find, and how I'm able to find at a reasonable price. I thought I'd share with you some of my tips, three tips actually, on how I'm able to score some of the bottles that I, that I have at a reasonable, at a retail price. And all the while, while drinking this new Michter's 10-year bourbon that I recently found. This one's a good one, it's a real good one. It just came out in March, so everyone's sort of looking for it. There's no reviews on it. There are some reviews, but not that many. Uh, and people are just sort of getting it now. So, as usual, whiskey first. It's a Michter's 10-year-old bourbon and one of their limited edition bottles. Well, they have a handful of limited edition bottles that they have yearly. They have the 10-year-old bourbon right here. They have the 20-year-old and the 25-year-old, which are, you know, unicorn. You don't, you don't see them anywhere. I mean, if you do, it's, it's ridiculous price. Um, they also have the Rise, and I know they have like the barrel strength ones, and they have the Shanks and the Bomb Burgers as well. But this one is one of the harder ones to find, even more than the Bomb, bomb Burgers and the Shanks. And it comes in a wax dipped top. I call it the condom top, but um, yeah, so it makes it a little more special and comes with the little net, little rubber net. So let's open it up. Uh, the little tab that that helps me open the wax top <laughs> broke off so I had to use the scissor so I'm back and it's I took off the wax and here we go it comes in at 47.2 percent alcohol it's aged 10 years but from what I read it actually has juices that are much older than 10 years. The story is that in 2022, the McDurst, they didn't release this bottle, this 10 year bourbon, because the distillery or the distillers thought if you wait one more year for this bourbon, it will be an excellent, much more better exceptional bourbon or so, so they say. So no 10 year bourbon released last year. The last, so it's been a year and a half, maybe even two years since uh, people saw a new bottle of 10 year McDurst bourbon. Let's try the nose first. Wow, wow, it's super butterscotchy, super butterscotchy. Like Werther's candy um, smell, like someone melted Werther's candy in here. Like slight apple note, I, I sense, but but everything is so like a very buttery and rich, I smell it. Let's go for a swig. Cheers everybody, good to be back. Wow, it's delicious, absolutely delicious. The first thing I notice is it's, well, it's only 47%, but it tastes hotter. Maybe it's, it's the first drink of the day, but it's definitely hotter than 40 some percent. I will say it's 50 or 55. It doesn't drink like a 47 percenter. And the color is real golden amberish too. I love it. And then it's very viscous. I don't know if you can see. A very viscous for a 47 percenter. I mean, it's almost unbelievable. I feel like they're lying about the percentage, but try one more sip. The butterscotch comes through. Very buttery, rich. Um, there's the oakness, the oakiness uh, that sets the bottom tone of it. I don't taste the apple. I smelled apples, but I don't taste it. But yeah, it's very complex. Has a uh, host and walnut notes in there. It's nutty and sweet and uh, thick and rich, which is all good things when you're describing bourbon, right? Mm. I don't know, it doesn't taste like any of the, if I'm trying to compare with uh, the other bourbon uh, Michter lineup, it doesn't taste like, it doesn't taste like the regular Michter's bourbon. Definitely different, it has it's bolder, 
yet smoother. It's sweeter and nuttier. I'm trying to see if I can compare this to uh, another 10 year old uh, whiskey, like an Eagle Rare. It's not even, it doesn't taste like Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare is very one dimensional, two dimensional. It's good, but uh, that's, uh, that's Eagle Rare. So it's not, this is much better. Um, maybe like a Russell's single barrel or 10 year old might be close to this, but still, this is really good. I still can't believe this is 47% or it's much hotter than 47%. I mean, I, I'm no super expert, but when it comes to hotness, I could taste the difference. This is definitely like 50 or plus. Now I'm getting like a, uh, like a, not a rye, but more like a herbal taste coming through. Interesting, interesting. Anyways, in my collection, I have a good number of bottles that are relatively rare. Now I don't have crazy rare bottles as some of the, some of you might even have like the, you know, crazy old pappies or, or stuff like that. But I do have, you know, a good number of bottles that are hard to find, rare to find. And none of these bottles I've paid more than a few hundred bucks. I mean, none of them I paid thousands of dollars, right? I know people pay like thousands of dollars for pappies or, or wallet, you know, older wallets and stuff like that. I don't have money to pay that much, first of all. Second of all, even if I did, I don't think I paid that much. So I think the, the most expensive bottle that I have is under $300 in all my, you know, what, 100 bottles or whatever I have. So, um, you know, people ask like, you know, how, how do you get these bottles at, at MSRP? How do you get these bottles at retail? And um, I always give them the same advice. So three points um, that I usually, you know, uh, three suggestions that I usually give to people and I, that I share with you today as well in scoring some of these rare or allocated bottles at MSRP at retail price at a fair, uh, reasonable price without paying hundreds of dollars of markup. So the first one, it's sort of obvious, but I mean, you have to mention it's so important. It's so vital to, to getting a bottle. Right? It's being consistent. It's being consistent and not giving up. It's very important. I hear people say, oh, you know, Steve, if I go to a Total Wine and I went there a couple weeks ago and I didn't see anything and I never see anything that's rare whenever I go there. And then I tell them, you can't just go once in a while or once every month at a random time and then just expect that you find something crazy rare. It just does not happen for a variety of reasons. Right? And you can't get discouraged because you just can't find something because you just check once every blue moon you have to be consistent this one is actually a good a great example right this one i bought it at bevmo out of all places right i didn't buy it at some you know marked up liquor store i didn't buy it at some you know club place that you have to pay extra money and you'll know, be a part of like a bourbon club no, i didn't do that i walked into bevmo and bought it at a retail price right it's 200 dollars, which is still steep but um i think these are going for like four or five hundred now if you look at all my 350 or something like that um you know so i mean story behind it is once every week or once every other week or something like that i drive out to somewhere relatively far away from here for for the business that i attend to and on the way there is a bevmo literally on the way so i make an effort i make a business to to sort of visit that store whenever i can whenever i have time it only takes like five minutes or so nine times out of ten i don't find anything i go in there it's the same stuff stuff that i've seen you know prior um it's the same stuff that's on the shelf and i asked the people there's nothing there but for this bottle um you know it was it was last week or so <sighs> i was in a hurry but i just thought okay well i'm just stop by for a few minutes i went in there check the shelves nothing check the glass case nothing i'm about to walk out i run into the to the bevmo employee and i asked her hey you know how you doing how's it going uh, good to see you. Uh, do you have anything uh, special or allocated that you haven't put out yet? And she goes, okay, I'll check. And she goes to the front um, and she picks up the phone and calls it. I guess there's a guy in the back of the store and goes, hey, is there anything new today? Is there anything allocated today? I'm just sitting next to her or I'm standing next to her, just waiting. And she goes, um, you know, uh, I don't think anything allocated, but I, uh, he tells me there's some kind of Michter's bottle that's back there. So I'm thinking, okay, it's just a regular Michter's bottle, right? Regular Michter's bourbon or rye or sour mash or American whiskey. So I'm like, okay. But I just think, okay, well, I'll take a look. And she's like, okay. And she asked the guy to bring it out. And she brings this, this bottle up, this bad boy, this 10-year bourbon that was 
not existent in 2022. Totally unexpected and I picked it up. Now I could have, you know, out of those countless times that I've been there, I didn't pick up anything. I could have given up after, I could have given up after, you know, three times or four times, but I did. You know, nine times out of 10, I don't find anything. But that one time that I did go in, thinking I'm not gonna find anything, I find something and that's all worth it. So being consistent and not giving up is, is half the battle, it's half the battle. It does get discouraging. It does feel like a waste of time a lot of times, but you know what? If you're serious about whiskey, if you're serious about bourbon, if you do really want to score these bourbons at a reasonable price, at a fair price, at a retail price, and without paying, you know, hundreds of dollars or more than its MSRP, then then it might be worth five minutes to get out of your, your normal routine and, and find a find a bottle. Okay, moving on to the second tip. Second suggestion I have in order to find a good whiskey or more allocated whiskey is that you find out when the delivery dates are for certain stores, when the drop dates are, what time of the day uh, does a delivery truck come. Those are very, very important. Here's why. A lot of the, these bourbon, whether it's just mixers or whatever, Wellers or Colonel Taylors, when the de delivery happens, and these, you know, Total Wine, Bethmo, Costco, you know, all these grocery stores, they all get them multiple times throughout the year, many times dozen times throughout the year not that they don't get them it's just that they only get them in very limited quantities and when they come in it's gone within a flash it's gone within minutes seconds second people just come in and whew, gone so if you know when the delivery dates are if you know when the delivery time of the day when the delivery drop comes in that could definitely increase your chances of finding a good whiskey a highly allocated whiskey. For example, for me, I know there's a, a Total Wine uh, nearby that I, I frequent. That Tuesdays and Fridays are their regular delivery dates. That's when the delivery truck comes to drop off your various kinds of whiskeys, or not even just whiskeys, but all kinds of booze, right? And it's always in the morning, so right before they open. So I know that that's usually the, the cadence. So I make an effort whenever it's Tuesday morning or Friday morning, I make an effort to go there when they open and then see if I could find something that's good. I don't, I don't stay there for hours. I don't stay there for longer than a few minutes, actually. I go in there, see if that's good. If there's anything good, pick it up. If there's not, just walk out. It takes five minutes. Sure, you could be consistent, but you keep visiting on a Saturday night or like Friday after you end work or, uh, you know, Monday morning when no delivery happens. Like, you're not really increasing your chances by doing that because even though you're consistent, even though you're there regularly, but you're not there at the right time. You know, those people who are there at the right time, they're the ones getting first dibs on all the rare stuff. And rare stuff, it only comes in, what, six, you know, case, maybe 12 bottles. And after that, it's done. And it goes out within a minute on a lot of the ones. All right, the third point, the third suggestion I have for you to increase your chances of getting a good bourbon, a rare bourbon, make a relationship with the people at the store and be a good and be a good person be a kind be considerate be a decent person i've had conversation with uh, with people at uh, some of the stores where they say oh man some of the people that come here are total jerks total douchebags they just come here to demand stuff they don't have it they get mad because they think we're lying or there's uh, stories of i've seen it too people just come in they only look for like one thing they only want like blattens right I want blends. I heard you I had it. Then they don't have it, and he just you know, storms off. And the next day he comes in, blends, and storms off. Never buys anything else, right? If you put yourself in in a store owner's shoes or store manager's shoes, it's very hard to uh, cater to those kind of people, right? They come in there and demand stuff, or you're just rude to them. They're not gonna give you the best stuff. They're gonna keep the stuff for for their best customer, people who they know, who they have relationship with, who. Uh, for like let's say a mom and pop liquor store like they're gonna you know hold on to those good bottles for the people who buy stuff there not just people who just come in and ask for certain things that are rare and never buy anything if i was the owner i would never i would never give to give like the high-end stuff or rare stuff to those kind of people that is just natural human tendency so try to be a good human being you know, be a good be a good sport be kind, be considerate, just strike a conversation. You don't have to stay there for an hour and chat with them. Just say, hey, how are you? How's it going? You know, good to see you, what's your name? Stuff like that. Eventually, you'll develop a relationship, not like you know, 
deep relationship, but like just a superficial, good enough, like a very cordial relationship. And you'll find out that that kind of relationship will be very fruitful in letting you find a good whiskey. So yeah, those three are my, my three main tips. Be persistent, don't give up, don't give up. You just pick a couple couple spots that, that are near your house and just, just keep visiting them and don't give up even though you know you go there for months you don't find anything. That next time you go, that might be the time that you find a very good whiskey. And number two, try to find out when the drop date is, when the delivery truck comes or when what time of the day the delivery truck usually comes. That could definitely increase your day, uh, your chances of uh, finding a very good whiskey, very allocated, very, very rare whiskey. Because again, those whiskeys, when they come in, they're gone in a second. So if you're there at the right time, at the right moment, then then that'll, that's going to increase your chances of finding the whiskey. And then lastly, not the least, just be good to those people who, who work at those places. Be good to the people at the liquor store, uh, at the counter. Uh, you never know. You never know. I mean, those people are just like you and I. They're humans. And um, you know they like you know, they like it when you're kind to them, when they're considerate to them, and, and give them business other than the one that you're looking for. I just want kernel, and that's all I care about. Like, you know, go in there. If you don't want to buy another bourbon, just buy a diet coke or buy a, buy a Doritos or something. Just walk out with a dollar fifty, you know, paying a dollar fifty for a bag of chips or something. Right? That's that's better than always pestering them about lanterns every day. So be good, be kind be courteous and make relationship with the people um, that you might do business with. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your time. If you get a chance, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Let me know what you think of the, uh, if you had a chance to have the Mictors 10, whether it's 2021 or prior or 2022, three, like the one I have, let me know at the bottom. Let me know what you think. Um, is it worth 200 bucks? Would you pay 200 bucks? Thanks again. Have a good one. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.